<laughs> Good morning. I'm Carol Selden. This is Karen Hansen. We are your co-presidents of New Canaan Beautification League. And she is sitting on here so that I'm the taller one. <laughs> and we can both get in the frame of the uh, recording. We're delighted to welcome you. Uh, our in-person audience, and it's the first time we've been in the Nature Center in about a year and a half. Um, wow, amazing, isn't it? So uh, happy that you are all here. Thanks to membership, Christy Inman and Christine Fagerstahl, gracious readers, and loyal guardians of name tags. Now you gotta make sure that your name tag gets collected at the end, otherwise you um, will be in the doghouse. <laughs> Um, and uh, let's see, thanks to the Spicy Hospitality Trio of Cindy Bameter, Ann Tropiano, and Robin Miner, and their volunteers, Nancy Jordan, Fanny Moran, and Betsy San Marco. It's a beautiful spread, and don't you like the arrangement that we have for things yes. now? Yes. Um, I think it uh, works very nicely for us, and we're not all clustered in the back trying to grab goodies. Uh, now, you may have taken a raffle ticket and when you came in and a lot of people just stick it in their badges. At the end, we'll build a suspense here, uh, we will draw winners for begonias recently dug from my garden. There are two of them in, in the back there. There's the escargot, which looks like a snail. That's why it's called escargot. Uh, and some Rex begonias. Some of them are blooming, others will, uh, will bloom. Um, take off the nasty leaves, I did the best I could, um, but I get, had to get them out before it got too cold and, and too frosty. So they become your house plants for the winter. And then uh, when the weather warms up, you can bring them outside, put them in a container or uh, plant them back in the ground and um, enjoy them year round. Um, the, the escargot is a particular favorite of mine. So is that poem. <laughs> okay. So uh, also before the first frost and inspired by our speaker today, Kyle, I cut an arrangement of what I found in my garden yesterday. Okay, and that's on the back table there. Um, th there are all kinds of things in there from grasses to hydrangeas to knockout roses. There's even some clematis. Um, uh, I forget all, all of the things that are in there, but he was an inspiration to me when he came over and was foraging in my garden uh, for the kinds of things that you can find and can you will find things year round, right, Kyle? Um, uh, even, even if they're dry or in a different state than you're used to looking at, at them. Um, there are anemone um, seed pods in the top there, which I really like. Um, so try to figure out what's, what's in that. Um, our autumn luncheon with Speaker Paige Dickey was warm and wonderful way to start our season and our calendar year. Uh, thanks to everybody who took part, a special thanks to organizers, Gloria Simon, Sarah Hunt, and Kirsten Gregorio. Now, Halloween is a sweet memory uh, and we are in festive planning <coughs> mode for celebrating winter holidays, the holiday greens, <laughs> And I guess it's now the Greens and Gnomes workshop <laughs> will be held right here in the Nature Center on Wednesday, December 1st. Kathleen, would you like to say some few things oh, about it? Um, well, yeah. Um, Peter and I are uh, really the assistants to Laura and Andrew Alt, who shared it last year, and we're really in a learning curve. <laughs> so um, we're good worker bees, but we really need more. So we really, Fanny, thank you for writing up a nice, um, for Laura and when we did it together, and that's right for the holiday workshop. But um, I think Kristen, Kirsten was going to talk about it, but there is a sign up. If you go to the newsletter that Fanny sent out, there's a description of the day, of course, and a sign up genius for the ships. So we welcome everyone. Everybody can help. It should be Monday. I participated last year. 
first time, all I did was put photos on. So really, <laughs> that's required a lot of talent. Um, so come and have some fun. Thank you. And you might want to bring your clippers and oh, have yeah. some gloves too. Yes. Okay. Um, Tate, did you have a few things to do? Okay. We are taking orders for our very own NCBL vest. This is, I think, a unisex. This is a medium, which I would consider like largest for a woman. But it's $45, check made out to NCBL, and you can take orders today. I'll be out in the lobby later on. It, it could be nice and snugly for a day like this. Yes. And then we are, we have ordered the bright yellow t shirts that you see around town, but this time long sleeve because we need to protect our arms. I've gotten was an idea a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And so they will be in two, maybe at the same time. So the shirts, the shirts are this color. The lime green, so it'll make a nice duo if you have. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a great present. I know we'll be shopping locally, so these will be available. Um, I can order them just about any time. It's it's that eighty four store that's here in town, so we're staying local, and they've been wonderful about it. Uh, and then gnomes. Mm -hmm. If you saw your newsletter, we have a gnome ornament this year for the the new Canaan landmark ornaments. And that little ornament is available at the Historical Society. It's $20, the money goes to them. We will be at the farmer's market this weekend too, on Saturday. This Saturday and next Saturday with all five ornaments uh, selling them. And those also make nice presents. I don't know if the person's here, but someone, every year they buy a couple and she said, whenever I go to somebody's house on the holidays, which probably hasn't happened in a year, but um, <laughs> she said, I tie an ornament to the wine bottle. And I think that's oh, oh, so yes. a clever idea. That's a nice yes. idea. Too. Very nice. And very local, handmade in New Canaan. Does it say beautification league on it? Or? Yes, Good. yes. Good. And um, then we have the New Canaan sign, that, like the silver mine one. Mm -hmm. So we have, right. a, we have five different ones. Lovely. Thank you, Faith. Okay, so today's guest uh, presenter is Kyle Riccoboni. He is a tremendously talented floral designer, naturalistic, creative artist, and plant guru. Okay, I've known Kyle for a long time. Um, Shirley Stanton, as a matter of fact, is the one who introduced me to Kyle back in a day, it must be 10 years ago, easily, um, when we were doing tablescapes and Kyle did the most fabulous tablescape arrangements that you have ever seen. I remember going into one room and he had taken and put down um, a plastic cloth on top of the table and then was covering the whole thing with moss and then built up from there. Really fabulous and, and gorgeous. His demonstration will be a special treat and he will teach us some amazing tricks uh, for our own holiday and winter decor. And Kirsten <laughs> is going to take over now. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, I think this meeting in person could really catch on. <laughs> <laughs> but we're also delighted to have those of you who are joining us on Zoom. <clears throat> I'm delighted to introduce Kyle Riccoboni to you. Not only is he a New Canaan native, but he lives in the house where his family has lived for a hundred years. Kyle has been in the retail industry since 1980. Starting out in fashion and visual merchandising, Kyle had a long career working for both Macy's and Saks Fifth Avenue as visual merchandising director and fashion director of the Stanford, Connecticut store. While at Saks in the mid 80s, he started his own floral design business called On Occasion, uh, specializing in wedding and event flowers. In 2000, Kyle became the creative director at Earth Garden, where for 20 years he elevated the company's brand. He worked as the wedding and event designer, gift buyer, and manager. Kyle has now happily started his own business called Modern Houseplant, offering a full service houseplant care and design business. But flowers are still a very important part of his life. 
Kyle enjoys gardening, collecting antiques and travel. And he's also an artist specializing in landscape painting. That I would like to see. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you will really enjoy Kyle's presentation to us this morning. I feel certain that he will get our creative juices flowing and hang on to that ticket you were given when you checked in because you may get to take one of his creations home with you. Let's welcome Kyle Riccoboni. Thank you, Carol, for having me, Kirsten, and everyone here. It's nice to be here today. Um, and I know a lot of you, and uh, look forward to meeting more of you, including my old pal, Stephanie Hutter, who I did not know was mm -hmm. uh, part of this wonderful group. Yeah. So when I found out she was here, I got a little extra nervous because her, her knowledge of plants it's far greater than mine. <laughs> I was hoping to get away with a few things. Anyway, so um, this was my inspiration for today's lecture. <laughs> um, I love to, to try to figure out what to do with everything out there. Um, usually this time of year, as gardeners, we're winding down, we're putting things away, we're closing up. But I like to keep thinking about beauty that's out there all year. I mean, through the winter, um, it's not my favorite of the four seasons, but I, I do love parts of it. Um, so, you know, things are beautiful in their early stages, but they're also beautiful in their later stages. Like, Many of us. <laughs> 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 and there's beauty in something that is past its prime, so to speak. But anyway, this started, um, I have a privet hedge at the end of my driveway that was, you know, beautiful from here up, but then from all the way up here was dead. So I had a guy cut it. And I thought, well, what can I do with this? Um, and there was piles of them, piles of these, of these branches. So I thought, well, I can't let them go to waste. So I thought about making uh, something from them, a wreath. And I'm going to talk a lot about wreaths and what we can make wreaths out of. And nothing you will see today is traditional, by the way. Uh, it's all thinking out of the box. It's nothing traditional holiday. It's, it's sort of seasonal beauty that we can find. So what I did was I cut the top parts of this Thing and made this twig ring. And it took me about a half an hour. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, it's not that, you know, complicated. Um, I just cut the tops of all these beautiful branchy things and attached it to a reef one that I got at Michael's Art Supply. And just a metal reef one with wire. Um, I'm a firm believer that anything you do on mass is beautiful. Um, if you take anything that's just, you know, rather than mixing it together, if you bunch it together, it becomes beautiful just because it's a statement. So that's how that started with this little twig wreath. And I think it's, wish we had a nail in hand. But, you, know, <laughs> you can add to this, you could add feathers, you could add grasses, you could add pine cones, you could add evergreens, just by sticking in these pieces. Uh, it's lightweight and easy to make. You can do this with just about any kind of twigs, but it's, it's the key is grouping things together and keeping them, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a group. So from there, I went last, uh, this past April, we went up to Vermont, and there were pine cones everywhere, all over the ground of this house that we were staying in. I couldn't resist. <laughs> I got a garbage bag and I started filling this up with pine cones and I've made several wreaths. Again, just, you know, just on square wreath forms. Um, and I'll show you in a bit how to go about doing that. Um, so that was that. There's all kinds of wreath forms out there. Uh, the, you see these, these are easy to work with. Um, the metal rings in different sizes. That's what this is made on only in a square. And then this is what's trendy right now. Um, this type of uh, wreath form is more trendy in that you would leave part of it exposed. You create your 
your design down here on the bottom, sort of asymmetrically, and leave the rest bare. And that's sort of a trendy look right now. A lot of uh, bridesmaids are using these to carry, you know, down the aisles oh. with a bouquet with floral interest just on part of the ring. So that's another option. These make great candle rings if you want to um, put something on these. Again, very easy. The only problem with styrofoam with wire, you have to be careful it doesn't cut into the styrofoam. And glue gun. Uh, glue gun. <laughs> so sorry. another wreath I made. Oh, this is Thanks to Carol Selden. Oh. So I, oh. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff from Carol's house. The hardest part about this wreath is bending over and picking up the leaves. <laughs> <laughs> it's further down than it used to be. <laughs> But yeah, just oak leaves that will last. I love the color. They look like leathers. Um, and just on a small uh, ring this size, the trick again is grouping them. You can you can take five or six leaves, and I'll show you, um, ahead of time and make bunches. Or I'm too lazy to do things like that, and I, I have no patience. I'm a very impatient designer, uh, but you could you could literally wire them together or you could staple them and you have your little bunch and uh, put it on your leaf form and just start wiring all the way around and uh, like shingling a roof, overlapping them until you have this. This could also make a wonderful uh, candle holder. You know, a beautiful candle in the center or a pillar candle that's taller, a glass hurricane. And then when it sort of gets really dry, my best friend, I'm not spray <laughs> you can spray paint it gold or silver and it becomes something different. So, you, you know, there's just so many possibilities uh, out there. So thank you Cheryl, for letting me pick up your leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Go get some more. Yeah. Um, Here's another wreath. I love lemon leaves that you can get at the flower. Now these I didn't get in my backyard, but you can get them at the flower market. Lemon leaves dry beautifully and hold. I mean, they don't, oh, <laughs> they don't go anywhere. Um, and they spray paint beautifully. So I made this ginormous wreath. Oh, wow. And this is on the hay, uh, the straw form. And then I just spray painted it lightly. I like, and I can't find it anymore, the color platinum. This is, used to be a spray paint called platinum. Yeah. It's hard to find. So I did a light coat of silver and then went over it with gold. Oh, and again, it's a nice, nice suit. Oh, this, oh, is, yeah. this is an indoor only. I mean, you wouldn't put it outside unless it was well covered. But again, you could put a big fat bow, you could do lots of things that you the centerpiece on a dining table with several candles, and it'll last and last and last. By the way, everyone, just feel free to speak up if you have any questions. Process. Um, so that's that's a way to you know look around to see where you can make a wreath out of. And there are all kinds of things out there. Again, keeping grouping things together. It's much harder in design to mix things. That takes a little bit more experience um, in floral design. I mean, a, a huge mass of sweet peas is gorgeous, but when you start mixing other things, you have to be a little bit more careful in how you design it. So you'll, you'll be proud of what you do uh, if you stick with one item because it, it always looks beautiful. I mean, it always has a, a beautiful end result. I wanted to to talk a little bit about floral. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just wondering, what would you do with thousands of hickory nuts? Any <laughs> brilliant ideas? Yeah, I mean that's where something like this comes into play, and yeah. hot glue. Hot glue. Yeah, oh. I would cover something like this first with moss, mm -hmm. wire all the way around with sheet moss, green sheet moss, to create a bed for the for the nuts. Where do you live, by the way? I'll be over there in a minute. <laughs> Oh, 
for you. Okay, yeah, no, and, and so again, it's just patience in succession all the way around. How many have used hot glue? Yeah. yeah. So we know the dangers of hot glue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have the galaxies to prove that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's what I would do. Okay. Um, not too big because it's going to get heavy. And uh, so start out with a, a smaller ring. Okay. And um, yeah, this type as well. The, the problem with this is I always leave the plastic on when doing, uh, making, using these, because the, the hay does fall apart and it's a mess. And I, I like, I, I'm very tidy, I don't like these. Another thing you could do with your hickory nuts is do two containers, set one inside the other in glass and fill the outside one with the hickory nuts and then put something else in in the interior one. Yeah, yeah, lots of things. Um, so floral mechanics, that's a very important part. I mean, you know what, I'm not gonna talk about that just yet. I want to stick, stick with my uh, privet hedge. Right. So the, I cut all the, the branchy tops off and then I was left with this part and I couldn't throw them away. So I made, <laughs> I made this funny thing. Um, so, um, I'm not a basket weaver, so don't don't worry. Uh, I I just thought, you know what? If you can make something that will take you through the season and keep changing it as things die, or or you feel like changing it, start out with an organic structure. And this is just pieces that I've wired together. And you can see it's sort of a triangle. I did chose a triangle shape. It doesn't have to. And I just started by creating a triangle and wiring the three corners together and then building on it. Um, my, I love fine wire. I don't know if you use this. It's much easier on the hands than uh, regular wire. And- Where do you get it? Uh, I get this at East Coast Floral Supply, but you can get it at any craft store. And it's, it's pretty strong. If you feel like you need to double it, then obviously you can. Um, but this was so easy to make, it really was. And so what I'm gonna show you now is what you can sort of do with it. If this is on your table or your kitchen island or your server or somewhere in your house that will go through the season and you just keep adding and subtracting. So let's start out with fall. Um, here you can go with this. And um, I mean, I have brought so much stuff. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't plan. I'm not a planner. I, um, as a floral designer, I like to go to the flower market and see what inspires me. It was always hard for me to do weddings um, because you start eight months, 10 months, five years in advance. <laughs> you know, some girls just have to know exactly, and it's just not that way. It just isn't that way. The most beautiful floral arrangements happen quite by accident. Not, you can't plan too much. Um, but anyway, I, I digress. Um, so for something like this, you can start to add dry materials into your uh, arrangement. I spray painted some of uh, Caspia that was blue, gold, and silver. And <laughs> The nice thing about this is you can just break it off and stick it into your arrangement and it'll take on a very ethereal uh, look um, throughout your piece. And you know, you would continue this all the way around. You might want to add some leaves. Oh, and the Sandy, thank you very much, makes a beautiful Blackberry lilies in your garden. I had these at my house, but I forgot to get them. They can add to the. I love black. They can add to the drama of the piece. I just love. It. And I'm just going to stick them into my structure at different lengths. Doesn't, it's, not, it's not rocket science. It's really very, but here's the trick. Here's the beauty um, to add to it. Where's my saucer? I, 
I'm going to add some candles to this. Uh, candles. Well, here we go. Don't I know I heard the <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I love floating candles. They're a little less dangerous when you're working with dry materials. And I did a wedding about uh, four weeks ago, and we had a hundred and almost two hundred floating candles on the tables. Can you imagine for filling those? And I'm I'm a perfectionist. I like the water level to be all the same. <laughs> Find your floating candles now. I just ran out of my linens and things. There's a great, um, <laughs> there's a great resource called I can't remember. I know I East Coast has them. IKEA has them at the moment. IKEA, yeah. And you can have the mail to you. Yeah. <laughs> May I light this just for five seconds? Yeah. Is that sure? That's the most because you have to see the match. <laughs> Um, this one may go. Um, okay, so then, I need to But you can continue to add to this, and then I made little, um, again, thanks to Carol Selden, I took some of her oak leaves and gilded them, gold leaf, yeah. and then we can hang these from the little, from the little exterior, keep them away from the flame. Very easy to do. And then I made some pine cones to hang. And you could, you know, again, the sky's the limit. You can add just about anything you want to this. Here. And again, I just put you bind wire. My daughter put these on her ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, adorable earrings. Um, so yeah, there you go. And then if you wanted to add some some color, oh, wow. some pumpkins and gourds, and uh, you know, again, keep changing it. You could, uh, when this is all finished, you can stick evergreens in there. Um, you could stick amaryllis, beautiful open amaryllis and water tubes in nestled in for a dinner party. Um, the other thing I like to do, is this for me, by the way? I do. Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Do you mind? <laughs> um, I love to take glass <laughs> cylinders and clad them with things. Uh, I did this with crocosmia, dry crocosmia, and the nice thing about fake candles, because we don't want to put a real candle in here, is that you can achieve this look. And that's great. And that's, that can become part of your display. Um, Carol Selden sycamore bar. This is very fragile. Um, but again, a candle inside, or you can fill it with water and do flowers as part of your escape. Um, this I took, and this is not finished, right? I had a Japanese maple tree that I had pruned, and I love the way the leaves dry, right? Then gold. You put a candle. So the trick is using a rubber band. Put a rubber band around, and then you can do anything you want. Carol's <laughs> uh, around the edge, all the way around. It looks so easy. It's very easy to do. It takes a little patience, but you can get the idea. Uh, you can do the same thing with sticks. Uh, I love euonymus, bare euonymus branches, because they have the little, you know, chicky jack things. I know that's really horticulturally yeah. correct. <laughs> um, and then, and then tie it with ribbon or raffia. Um, 
anything you see on the side of the road, you know, it's one I've never, I haven't been in a car accident because I drive like this. Stuff that I call roadside. <laughs> <laughs> This I, I you should have seen me the other day climbing oh, off the Merritt Parkway, the Sumac, which I love. It's hard to find because it's always on the highway and it's always way up there. <laughs> so you know, I had a stick and I was pulling down the pieces because I had to have food as much. Um, but again, you can add a little color into that. How beautiful is that? Yes. Oh, it's just beautiful. Um, they make a mess. What is that? Sumac. 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 Why is it poisonous? I've never learned that. Is it actually I pick this all the time. I've never heard of it. Why did you break out into a When I was when I was 18, I worked at this uh, men's clothing store. Uh, this is and I knew nothing about much <laughs> but uh, my boss asked me to do a display it's just this time of year and so i set off into the woods and there was this beautiful red vine climbing up <laughs> 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 and i did the display the next day i woke up and i had no eyes <laughs> my mother <laughs> had to rush me to the hospital. I literally had no face. I mean, my face was just oh my swollen with poison ivy. Oh yeah. yeah, I didn't know what poison ivy was. So, let's learn. Learn. Uh, so, yeah, you can create all kinds of beautiful uh, candle holders with glass uh, cylinders, dollar store. You know, you can find these if you wanted to really set a dramatic table. Another one I did was. I wasn't too proud of this, but I brought it along anyway. Um, this is just vellum, you know, clear or tracing paper, glued, uh, euonymus leaves. And when it's burning, you can really see the red. So that's another, a little bit more contemporary look. Um, so that's your sort of structure. And this would change as you go through the season. Uh, you could create this in a long rectangle. Uh, you could sort of do a loose circle. You could get it, uh, add the branches to a wreath form as your base. So there's lots of things that you can create. You could spray paint the pine cones gold. Um, just continue to think, what can I do with this thing to make it a little bit more uh, creative in, in my home? Mm -hmm. Any questions on this? Please. What do you do when it starts to fall apart since you're in since what? Since you're a neatness. Oh. <laughs> what do you do when the comes in the seat? The seat head's going to go back here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, of course, don't do any of this in my house. <laughs> 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 I, 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 it's funny because, yeah, I don't like to get dirty. <laughs> but um, you can spray, you know, you could use hairspray to keep dry things contained or. <laughs> If you're really careful with spray mount that you know the spray glue, I don't like that because kind of, for some reason it just gets everywhere but where you want it to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, so hairspray is the best. Yeah. I happen to use. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the dry material do. I'm gonna blow these out. Make a mess. But um, you know they're part of nature and they're part of. Uh, some of the beautiful things. Once you spray paint them, though, that helps a lot. <laughs> Any other questions? Dustbuster. Yeah. Dustbuster. Yeah. Yeah. Gilded hydrangea. Carol Sell. <laughs> you could add those, you know, around for a different look, a bulkier look. Um, so yeah, the sky's really the limit. Now let me sort of clear this so I can do my next. Demonstration. Yeah, I love to. I get to, you know, I've said this earlier to many people here. I get to do what I love in people's homes and get paid for it. <laughs> so, uh, and then the housekeeper cleans up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Just beautiful. So that's fun. Oh, here's another thing that I, this is just a little side thing that great project for kids, oh. a little leaf tree. So what I took was um, a piece of styrofoam, put it into the pie, and uh, you know the things that orchids are held up with a little heavy wire piece, whatever this is, stuck that in and then just stacked leaves, fall leaves. It's a fun project, you could do it in, in you know, gradations, larger to smaller. Um, when I first did it, they were much brighter. They've since faded. Mm -hmm. But how fun would that be to do, you know, a bunch of these on your yeah. table? And then I just stuck a little bird's nest on top. That's, or you could do a pumpkin. I'm not gonna do that. You'd have to, you'd have to grill it or something. But a pumpkin on top could be fun. Um, all kinds of things you could put on top. I left all the stems because I thought that was cool. I started cutting them off, but I like the way that looks. And then you could always, again, there we go, with the spray paint. You could spray paint them as the season progresses. And then, you know, um, so that's fine. And that's a great project for kids. Oh, one more thing on the candle. These are really fragile, but I thought that came out. These are just ferns, spray painted gold. Uh, very delicate, very elegant. Um, it takes a very gentle hand to do this. But imagine a candle, a, you know, a battery candle inside here. You can get the little votive size. And then the gold, I tried it at home, the gold just shimmers. So it's beautiful. And again, you can tie that with a satin ribbon or a piece of raffia to hide the little band. You know, I'm such a crafter. <laughs> I've gone from floral designer to crafter. Okay, now. Now I'll put, try to do some of my floral things. Um, so I'm going to, for a neat person, <laughs> I'm a mess today. Okay, so this is this is a piece that I'm going to make. A friend of mine makes these boxes, these beautiful boxes out of glass that he's found. This guy that I know is a genius. But he's very frustrating because I said, why don't you make a few of these I'm doing this lecture? And I thought the lady, no, nah, I don't feel like it. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> one of those. Um, but I said, well, would you make one for me? Yeah, I'll make you one. So he made this box um, out of bark that he collected in his woods. Stephanie, you'd appreciate that very much. Um, I, it's just amazing. I put the little felt feet. Now somebody's going to get this today, so so it's not too much. Um, so it's felt, but it does leak. So be mindful that whoever wins this, uh, that when you water, you will have to take it to the kitchen or put something under it. And I didn't want to. You could line it with, you know, plastic. I just didn't want to get into that. So be mindful of that. So um, my thinking behind this is to do something that will continue throughout the season. So I'm making it today, but you should be able to con constantly change it with the basic elements in place. So I got, the, we're going to put in a little, uh, I think this is a spruce. What is this? Spruce? Lemon cypress. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lemon cypress. Oh, sorry, that's a lemon cypress. Where's the spruce? Yeah, this is a switch. Okay, so squeeze that in. Lemon slightly off center. I don't like things. I'm, I don't like pairs of things too much. So slightly off center. And then uh, this will be my fresh flowers that will change constantly. These will stay. Um, so I just a Tupperware container with chicken wire. And I was going to talk about floral mechanics. I have my chicken wire. Um, yes, <laughs> um, I eat chicken wire, but it's important in floral design work. Um, you know, you could wear gloves because you end up bloody from this stuff, but um, it's an important part of design. I'm very much against floral foam using oasis and both as a whole movement to not use it. It's horrible for the environment. It never breaks down. 
So with very few exceptions, I did a big party last weekend for this woman and I had to use it because the centerpiece had to be really, really, really low and flat. And so floral foam was the only solution, but I really don't like to use it. Um, so chicken wire is probably the best solution. And um, how many of you use it when you use floral? Yeah. You can, you know, wad it up like this, as simple as this, and jam that into your vase, and it provides that structure to get started. I try to use nothing, really, to, you know, doing a floral arrangement, just allowing the stems of the flowers to create that, that, um, what am I trying to say? Yes, yeah. Do you have any use a frog? I have it in years, but they're very trendy again. A lot of, oh yeah, the floral frogs, the little pin frogs with the, you know, and the glass frogs are really trendy because the look right now, believe it or not, is this sort of very messy, organic. Brides, young girls love this unstructured, like, oh, I just want to grab it out of the field. <laughs> <laughs> I did a bridal bouquet for this girl. She said she loved it. I, I can't imagine it. It was bigger than she was. <laughs> she just said, I just ran out before the wedding and grabbed it out of the field. <laughs> yeah, and 30 years from now, you're going to look back at your pictures and say, what was I thinking? <laughs> but she loved it. It was just a mess. It was a big mess. Um, and that's what she kept saying. I wanted to look messy. She's a gorgeous bride, absolutely gorgeous, beautiful gown, but she wanted this big, big, big mess. <laughs> so anyway, the look now is uh, for super floral arrangements is, you know, this, you know, a flower way, way, way up here and another one coming down here. Not, not round, not symmetrical, not clean, uh, very, and that's the beauty. And I, I do like that look. I just think sometimes for weddings, Stick with traditional, you know. Those pictures will haunt you in 30 years. What was I think? Anyway. Excuse me. What do you do uh, to prevent the wire scratching the vase down between the lips? So do you put it outside or inside? This is on the outside. So this is plastic, Tupperware, dollar store. Well, glass or... If it's glass. You can scratch glass. Yeah. 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 You could put, um, you, you could put some tape around first. You know, like uh, painter's tape or masking tape, and then put your chicken wire on the outside. But if I was doing the chicken wire in that vase, I'd put it stuck inside the vase, not on the outside. Um, in this case, I did on the outside because I wanted as much room as possible. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of room here. And these just, you know, sort of go in to the thing. Okay, so um, I'm going to put these in here. And where's my water can? Oh, oh, we have to have water. So this aspect part of the program, I'm going to talk about floral design. And so if you have any questions regarding conditioning of flowers, um, how to keep flowers lasting longer. Now's your chance. <laughs> I don't believe in floral food. You said it leaks. But yes, but uh, these are in the in the in the oh, tub. In the plastic. If you water this, they'll leak. Good, good memory on that. Floral food, you know, you get the little packet, and it's sugar. Basically, it's sugar. Mm -hmm. And so for, I mean, I shouldn't say I'm totally against it. If you use it quickly to, to condition your flowers, to hydrate them and feed them, because most flowers have been out of water for days and days. They come from South America, they come from Holland, they come from Italy, all over the world, shipped in, they've been in boxes. So to, to perk them up, you can use it. But sugar creates bacteria in water and bacteria is the enemy of flowers. And that's why flowers die. It, 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 you know, that bacteria in the water is just nasty. So I don't believe that. And the, as far as vodka is concerned, save it for yourself. <laughs> <laughs>
people have said, oh, I'm a little shot of vodka. Um, so, yes. Do you have an opinion on putting bleach into, you know, dropping bleach into a, a vase? Yes, but I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> um, yes, but very judiciously because I did a wedding again early on uh, and the bride wanted hybrid blue delphinium uh, on the altar to, and I saw I created this huge, gorgeous blue, 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 blue delphinium arrangements, nothing else, just the and I thought, oh, I should put a little bleach in it because this was on a Friday and the wedding was Saturday afternoon. Um, well, she got white delphinium. For her. <laughs> the flowers were flawless, but they just bleached the color out of the flowers. I put too much, obviously. Yeah. So again, did she mind? I don't remember. I blocked those things. <laughs> Uh, I could stand here for hours and tell you funny stories that were not funny at the time. That's how you learn. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, I, and I have learned many things the hard way. But uh, so I'm going to start out with some lucophory to um, establish my thanks to my neighbor. Yes, you know, you just you have to be nice to people and they give you things. So I'm just going to start out with a loose structure in inside the water, obviously. And just shout out to the questions because my head is down, so I may not see your hand. So conditioning flowers. Do you want to talk about that? Do you want me to talk about yes, that? Sure. Yes, sure. Um so as I said, it's very important <laughs> to the health of the flower to condition it properly when you get them. And cutting flowers, uh, that's a large part of the, the, the process. And if they're not conditioned properly, you will not get uh, nice flowers, nice arranger. I remember one day I was in Costco and you know, the roses there are what, you know, 9.95 for a dozen roses. And so a lady was looking at them one day, and I was pacing back and forth like this and watching her. You know, <laughs> she's looking over her shoulder like, what is this man doing? So I said, I'm so, excuse me, don't buy those roses. And she said, who are you? <laughs> I said, I'm a floral designer. And I said, let me show you something. And I went over and I squeezed the rose. Yeah. They were mush mm -hmm. because they had not been properly conditioned prior. Why will they get, you know, all these roses. So that's a, a good way to check. If you want to buy roses, make sure that they're firm when you squeeze them. And here's the thing with roses, they need to be uh, conditioned in hot water, hot water from the tap and cut the end, put it in hot water. Hot heat rises, we know that. So the water, hot water will go up the woody stem of the flower, of the stem of the plant and hydrate the flower. So if you put roses in, in cold water, I mean, it doesn't make sense, does it, to put it in a, a flower in hot water? No. But if you don't, the cold water will not reach the flower. And that's why roses do this. They, they, they call it called droop head, or they become soft. So make sure that when you hydrate, it's in hot water. That's also true of hydrangeas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hydrangeas must be uh, conditioned in hot water, as hot as you can get it out of the tap. Mm -hmm. So that again, woody stem, the woody stem plant, the water will travel up to the top. What about if there are bubbles in the water? The air? The air. Cause any problem? I've never experienced that. I've heard that about tulips. Mm -hmm. That uh, air, you know, and, and one of the tricks is to put a little pin prick through the stem of the tulip. You know how to do that? You've heard of that? Yeah. Um, um, a tulip. <laughs> uh, let's pretend this is a tulip. Um, if you take a pin and prick right here, right below the head of the flower, all the way through, it uh, allows the water to get up to the um, flower. 
because it will trap the water and the air will, because the tulip is a fleshier stem flower, obviously, uh, than a rose or a hydrangea. And by the way, cold water for those kinds of things, all the fleshy stem spring flowers, narcissus, hyacinth, muscari, what else, daffodils, all soft, fleshy, they get cold water. So, so yeah, I don't, I've never experienced really a problem with that. How long do you put the roses or the hydrangea in the hot water? And is it just like you dip it in? No, 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 no. Leave no, it no. in there? Mm -hmm. And as far as hydrangeas, really fill your bucket because the whole stem, I mean, what is it? what the word hydrangea is? Hydrate, right? It's got, they need to hydrate. So fill the bucket right to the top. Um, I also spray the flowers with water so that the water is being drawn up through the stem and also topically. Uh, hydrates are probably the hardest ones. You know, they, they are one of our favorite flowers, but they are miserable to work with. And every bride from here to California. Can we, can we do something else? <laughs> but anyway. Um, Hydrangeas. Yes, that's a that's a trick. So if you if you make your arrangement the next day for your dinner party, you come downstairs and they're wilted. Yeah. Pull them out, fill up the sink with hot water. Again, and submerge the entire flower stem, everything. You might have to wave down with the something, keep it submerged. And if it's not past the point of wilt, it will it will by you know. Come back. Do you need to give it a fresh cut? Yeah, absolutely. Or you do not? Absolutely. So on that, that's a good question. Fresh cut. If I'm if I'm doing a flower arrangement and I go like this, and my phone rings, I get the phone, I come back, I have to recut that flower. That most flowers immediately form a callus. You cut it. And that starts to form a callus. By the time you get it into the water, it's callus. So the faster you do that, and you don't, oh, I don't like it there, I'm gonna take it out, cut it again, put it back. That's very important. If you cut a flower and you know make a sandwich and then come back, it's yeah. it's too late. You need to recut it. That's why if you have a again, if you have a flower arrangement, you make it last longer. If you could possibly take it out every two days, recut the stems, clean the vase, fresh water, you'll have that flower into twice as long. And I know most florists, I was one, I am one, tape the vase, you know, with a grid, that's a nuisance. So you can't just easily pull the flowers out to recut them, but you can at least tip it over, drain it, and put fresh water. Okay, so yes, what is the best way to dry hydrangeas? Uh, two ways. Well, these were right on the on the bush dry. Um, another way, Martha's way, is <laughs> um, fill a vase with water. Yeah, I mean not full full, a little bit of water, and let the water evaporate, and they will just dry in the vase. You can hang them upside down in a dry room, and not all hydrangeas will dry nicely. Some varieties, like Annabelle, don't dry. Yeah. Um, not all of them will. They're, they, you know, you have to know the the um, whatever this is. Something. It's just a common. Yeah, forever and morning. What is it called? Blue. No. Endless. Endless, summer. Endless, summer. Endless, summer. Endless summer. Yeah, they dry nicely. Any other questions? <clears throat> all right. So where am I going to go? I'm going to add some environmental. <laughs> So you work from sort of your fillers and the, the outer margins first? Yes. In this particular scenario, I am. Um, or as a handheld, you work from the middle out? Yeah. You mean like a bridal bouquet? Yeah. Yes. Um, or one that you're making in your hand to go in. Into a vase. Yeah, you would start out with your yeah something first, whatever that is, and even if it's a single flower. Yeah. And um, you know, and then you're turning. Okay, you keep turning. Yeah. You you lay it and then you turn it, and you lay it, and you turn it, and you lay it, and you turn it, and that's how you get that lovely 
you know, a, a, a properly made bouquet could stand on its own <clears throat> because the stems are all, if you do it right, if you keep turning it in your hand. What is that green that you're using right now? Andromeda. Mm -hmm. So, see, I laid it down, I started talking, now you cut it. I'm going to do something completely irreverent and stick this into the soil. Uh -huh. Because I want something there, and it's fine. It's going to get moisture from the soil. And again, remember, this is going to keep changing. You're going to keep changing this. The Lakotha we will last, I find this lasts weeks. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. This will, I did, I did these in my pots last winter. Huge pieces of Lakotha weed, and it was gorgeous all winter long, didn't budge. And the leaves brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that'll, that will probably last. Um, I don't think I'm gonna put any more right now uh, greenery. I'm gonna find these beautiful sunflowers. And, I'm going to cut these short. I just want them to peek through. I have a question. Do the sunflowers sometimes when you see them, they're kind of closed while they open? Or oh, yeah, these were all tight as could be when I got them. And they, you know, they last a long time. And then, then when the yellow, when this is finished, just pluck all that off. And you have this beautiful chocolate brown center. I did, I did that once at a, at a lecture like this. I just started pulling and, and they all <laughs> <I was> like, <gasps> <laughs> so anyway, I'm not going to do that today because I want the color. That's an advertising. <laughs> a little high. Now remember, um, remember that. See, the chicken wire, I mean, it's really helpful, doesn't it? I mean, if I, you could get away with doing this without chicken wire, but you have to pack your filler in first. Um, really pack it in. I'm doing this backwards, so. Um, I'm gonna add some of these mums. I like to strip all the foliage off. It's not necessary to the, to the design, and it's not necessary to keep it. And I like to work with one flower at a time, get that done. I'm keeping this obviously very tonal. I'm not going to, you know, throw in hot pink or... <laughs> well, listen, I've worked with some designers and, you know, you're working side by side and you're going... <laughs> and you know, you have to say something. You have to say, you really want to put those two flowers here? And then you end up getting into a fight. <laughs> um, I like moms. I don't know. I like their samples. Yeah, I do too. They're, I they're, they last forever. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're they're reasonably priced. Right. They're they're you know they've got a bad reputation like carnations, but um, you know I I happen to like the more the larger ones. They're they're false peonies, right? Mm -hmm. Um, here's some beautiful hanging amaranth, just copper, try that. Um, keep the questions coming. The nice thing about, the nice thing about these kinds of materials is they're going to cover the, the front of the box, which is what I want to do. I, this yeah. amaranthus, okay. isn't it? <laughs> it sounds great. There you go. Well, that's one of one of your oh, here we go. Thank you. Do Do you cut it and angle it on when you always? Yeah. And, and why do we do that? It absorbs yeah, more surface. More surface space. Now, if you, no, no, I'm not going to say that. This is something I decided not to. Um, I, you know, you can see this building and building and building for color. 
Um, I really want to use this. I love this. What are these? Oh. Grab that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm so glad we are excited. I have a big dive. They have to snap around the The little fruit? I, I picked this like a week ago. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What is it? I'm going to leave the leaves. I, yeah. I, I just yeah. like that. Red, I like red. Red. Um, yeah. Robin. Yeah. And that's sort of just going to live in there. Um, what was I going to say about that? Um, I can't remember. I've been doing that a lot lately. <laughs> if, the lead, if the leaves die on that, you just just stop the marriage. No. I think they'll I think they'll hold. If not, they'll shrivel a little bit. But again, we don't want this to last. But you know, this is right. this is ever changing, ever changing. You can come in and you know pick up the leaves if you want. You know, take a few off. But the curling leaves can be pretty. Absolutely. See, I, and I think that we have to realize that there are. I love. I love all aspects of a, of a nature, you know. And this is another aspect. Um, the sort of passing, the passing of time. And again, another trend. Um, I follow this design. One designer, Lewis Miller. We were talking about him earlier. There's a trend also that you know creating a beautiful wedding arch, you know, uh, fresh flowers, that some of it be yes. beyond, yeah, beyond included in the fresh well, flowers. Yeah. And I think that's especially beautiful this time of year. Imagine beautiful fat white garden roses, you know, David Austin roses with something that's brown. I think that's beautiful. Well, I don't know. But to each his own. Okay. I'm not going to like this. A little shit tall. Um, now. Oh, here we go. Now, this is beautiful. I like this. <laughs> this could also, you know, this could have been beautiful in this piece, the little the orange or a sort of what else? <laughs> Islands. Islands. It's a yellow winterberry. Yeah, winterberry. Yellow winterberry. Now, I don't particularly love it next to the sunflower, but I'm going to keep it at a distance. This too could go on the end into the cypress. You stick that in. Does, berry is a nice thing to add to a floral arrangement because. Are some of these berries poisonous? Probably. Like you like for pets? I don't know if Ilex is. Is it poisonous? Do you know? Very, very small. Very small. They really have to be entirely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's reassuring. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to add a little dry to this because yeah. it needs another. I love these blackberry roses. Yeah. They can, you know, they can sort of, and they can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. What is this? Uh, Look at that. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I love snake. I love the contrast and the texture. We were talking about Caroline. We're talking about texture. How important texture is to an arrangement to a garden. Um, You tried doing the flower arrangement backwards. <laughs> um, Beautiful. 
Um, so texture, yeah, is extremely important. And these dry things can last when you take all this apart and start adding, you know, amaryllis or um, evergreens. And I have a comment about the dry stuff. I did not get that stuff from my house. I went up the hill to the top of the hill and got it from the herb garden. And the yeah. still is looking pretty lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Up on the top of the hill. I'll, I'll let you pick some of our dry stuff later. Thank you. I love it. You know, drives are really trendy right now. It's very trendy. Um, drive, you know, it's all this, the 70s all over again. So, yeah, dry stuff. I did a whole thing of design solutions last year. I don't want to do it again. But dry bouquets um, are, you know, and again, it's so funny to see things sort of cycle back around. We've all been to like macrame. Mammals are there all over. My daughter wants one for her little. She can make it. She, <laughs> she can make it. Um, so I, I'm going to add more to this, but this is basically, you know, you can't quite ever put enough in something like this. So, you know, never be afraid. And, you know, your dried stuff can go anywhere. There's a little, there's a little hole right there that's going to go there. I just love this burgundy. Yeah. And soon that, this we know is poisonous, but we don't know how. <laughs> and the, I love that dark burgundy. I do too. Love that color. But I want to, it's um, make a mess. I want to do a couple together so it doesn't look like it's one, two, three. Grouping and design is very important. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, now, I was going to say it would be fun to put some really tall paper candles, but maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Uh, any questions? We're find it's hard to, to know when to say when. I do best when I do things that are large because I say, mm, well, if I edit that, and it's like one thing tells you what to do next. Um, and the same applies to Jolly Frank, who is not here today as an interior designer. She said, well, if we, if we upholster those chairs like that, then that's going to tell us what to do with a bench that's in another part of the room. So it's, it's really all the same deal. Yeah. I mean, in the world of, you know, as a, as a professional florist, then you're doing an arrangement. It's got to get out the door. I mean, there's only so much time. You can spend <laughs> right. And, and it's the budget that you're given. Yeah. So that's one thing. But for myself, you know, I, I'm a painter, so I'll do a painting. And I, you know, the best thing you can do is walk away from it and come back to it the next day and look at it. Or, you know, as far as this, if this is on your kitchen counter, you might pick something of a Trader Joe's to add to it. And, or if this is finished, you take it out. Um, I'm of the school more is more. I'm not a minimalist. I don't like minimalism. Um, I love, I mean, look at this. Look where we live. Look where we live. We live in one of the most beautiful towns in the world and one of the most beautiful parts of the country. And it's just always giving and it's abundant. So my, that's my philosophy with floral design, 
these reeds are packed. Um, so don't be afraid to, you know, be heavy handed if you can. Any questions? So it's not a question, it's a comment yes. from years ago in this organization that so Japanese designer doing minimalist and she insisted to the point that every time I don't do it, I feel like I'm in the wrong. Putting the stem that grows under the water and cutting it. Oh yeah. She, it was she always she always had it in the water. She was just in the water. Yeah. That is a uh, a definite uh <coughs> However, in the world <laughs> industry, you just don't have time. For yes, that. right. No, it was very practical, but she was so insistent on it. It's like <laughs> to this day, I cut a flower. It's, it's like fast. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. You have to work long. fast. Yeah. Like we said, the, the longer the flower is out and exposed to the air, it calluses, mm -hmm. and that prevents the water from getting to the flower. So that is that is true. You just you know. As a floral designer, you just don't have the luxury of being able to do that. But if you're at home, yeah, and you want to submerge the power cutter in the water, that's absolutely true. Any other? Oh, you know, and, and I wanted to talk about heat. You know, this time of year, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> um, our homes are very dry mm -hmm. this time of year. We turn on our heat. Plants and flowers just suffer in this kind of thing. So, if you want to keep something going longer, you know, take it, you know, I don't know, do it, take it, put it out in your garage overnight or uh, in a cool area. And that will extend the life of the flower as well. Okay. One thing, uh, well, wait. I'm going to say, say a couple things first, Jim. Okay. We're just going to cut the recording off. That's all. Go ahead. All right. Um, okay. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, Kyle. This was just absolutely amazing. Um, and I wanted uh, you to mention Kyle has his um, cards here. Modern house plant. So that way you can contact him. And I guess you also have a website, right? Yeah. Instagram. 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 Yeah. The website was so two years ago. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> but speaking of websites, we, um, before we do the raffle, don't leave because we're going to do the raffle. But wanted to mention again the next program, or it's not really a program, but event, December 1st, um, Kathleen Murphy uh, and her husband, along with who well, else? Laura and Andrew are the leaders. Laura and Andrew oh, Walt, who are not able to be here today, will be doing um, the um, holiday Greens. workshop. Holiday workshop. So you can find all that information for the sign up for that on their website. And um, it's in the last, also in the last newsletter. You can sign up for shifts. Um, it's between nine and 2.30 on December 1st. So um, you just, you know, check that out. It'll be great fun. It'll be making gnomes as well as other things. <laughs> and um, the last thing, I guess, is the raffle. Yes. Excuse so. Me. Excuse me. Can I yes, certainly. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. 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 Because it is the right time to learn and he gave to us the many different ideas of how can we make the arrangements. It is time to apply our <laughs> team, fancy virus and I, we organize the Labor Care Center in the Power and Child. You got now amazing, perfect ideas. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you.
On the 27th of December, I know that's a difficult date, but oh, okay, we need some volunteers. Will, will one of you work with the volunteers? Yes. In case you miss, oh, in case they're not recording, but in case you missed that, anybody on Zoom, flower arranging for Waveney. So, yes, what we're talking about. Okay. All right. The moment of truth here. I don't. I don't feel like I should be picking the that Nancy. Okay. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> All right. No, okay. Jeff, you well, that there, to there's, the wait a second. There's several things here that are okay. given away. Wait, First, we'll start with the big we'll yellow. Start with, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is. Okay. I, it's two thirty-four. No, 2.34, all right. Okay, then we have uh, uh, 13 begonias, okay? And there are two on the back table, and then the there are 11 that are just outside the door there. Okay, so 2.48. Cece. Cece, Cece got one last year too. Cece. Cece. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Two forty-eight. Come on, we got a five twenty. Five twenty. Betsy. Okay. Okay. Get it. I'm not looking. No. Two thirty-eight. Two thirty-eight. Okay. There we go. Okay. Two thirty-seven. Two thirty-seven. Come on, speak up now. Uh, maybe, maybe gone. Two thirty-seven. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Two thirty-four. You know, right? Okay. I just have to count them. I won't let you. Five forty-six. Yeah. Okay. There you go. What are these for? These are for begonias. Okay. There were five nineteen. Oh, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, we just have to make sure we don't give away too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. But keep going. Yep. And go on. Five. I'll give them both. Five twenty-one. Five twenty-one. Okay. Barbara. And five twenty-three. Five twenty-three. Oh, yeah. Nobody, nobody claimed five twenty three. Two thirty six. Okay. Oh, good. Oh wait a minute. Wait, we got to count eleven. Four. So sorry. Six. Eight. Ten. One more. Five fifty. Okay. And does it? Oh, good. And does anybody want to take home the arrangement that I made, which was the sampler? Uh, uh or should I? Or should I leave it for the nature center? Oh, no. <laughs> Tell me what? Pick, pick one? Okay. All right. We'll pick one. Pick one. All right. That's a good one. 245. 245? 245. All right. 245? No. 547? It's you. It's you. It's gay? Oh, you're, you're, you're yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a wrap. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And yours is in the car. Okay. My ladies.